In this video, we'll be going over data sets. So first, we're going to talk about NumPy and Pandas data sets. NumPy data sets are used to store arrays of numbers, um, and they can be used to store data that represents pictures or images. And so you'll need to know a little bit of file in out uh, to work with these in homeworks. Um, there is another recitation on that goes in depth on NumPy. So here we're just showing very simple um, in out operations where you can save uh, arrays very easily and then load them using numpy.load. Pandas datasets are typically used to store tabular data. And just a quick note is that we typically won't use uh, pandas datasets to give you the actual data you'll be working with. You'll more so be using them to submit uh, the inference results from your models during the homeworks. So here we just have a very quick example showing you the creation of a table, uh, the export of that table to a CSV file, and then just to show that it stored all the information correctly, uh, you can see that you can read it back and get exactly the same information. Now the meat of this recitation is going to be for the PyTorch dataset class. You'll be using these on all of your homework twos, and they're very useful ways to read in data, organize data, and in some cases pre-process data, um, and especially as you get to more kind of interesting data sets, perhaps for your projects or just on the homeworks, it'll be really important that you know how to manipulate and create these data set classes to suit your needs. So there's the schema in this notebook, which you can reference more in depth. But the big, uh, the big takeaway here is that the data set class that you'll learn how to create uh, is going to work along with the data loader class that you're going to learn about in a different recitation. Um, and this is basically how you will load your trading examples to your model as it, as it trains. So I want to just go over the kind of general approach uh, to working with data sets and then a bit more in depth. Um, and the first thing actually has nothing to do with the data set class at all. It's, it's just we want to emphasize that it's very important to before you start doing any coding, is to really understand your data first. So, you know, load an example, visualize it if you can, see what shape the data is. Um, and in addition, you know, think about what, what's the process in the real world that generated this data in the first place. Um, this is a very easy step to forget, but it is quite important as you start to, to do deep learning out in the world. So to define a data set in PyTorch, uh, there are really three functions that you'll need to create. So they're listed here. There's a constructor init function, a length function just, that just returns the length of the data set, so you know, how many observations you have. And then finally, a get item, which is what actually retrieves the observation and gives it to your model. Um, there's one other uh, function that you can optionally define called a collate function. And this would be passed to a data loader, but uh, we'll provide you documentation on that in, as it becomes necessary in future homeworks. These are really the big three that you need to be aware of. But finally, um, I encourage you to take some time to just read over this section in the notebook about kind of additional design considerations that you might want to take into account as you're designing your own custom data classes. Just very quickly, uh, a few of them are, one is, you know, how large is your data? Does it fit into memory? Um, if so, you probably then want to load and pre-process your data in the uh, constructor init function. The reason for this is that because the, the get item function would be the other option, and that is called every single time uh, your model gets data uh, from your data set. And so if there's a lot more work that has to be done, it'll just take more time. However, if your data doesn't fit into memory, it might be better to do kind of a memory efficient data set class that uh, loads data and maybe pre-processes it in the get item function. So it'd be slower, but the benefit is you can run. Um, then there's a question of, you know, do you want to instantiate using X's and Y's versus a root directory? Um, we'll go into this a little bit more, but I encourage you to check out maybe some of the functions uh, at the locations listed here. Um, then there's a question of, you know, you have your train and validation data sets versus a test data set class. And it tends to be a good idea to create two separate instances of those classes uh, and two 
class definitions, and the reason is that you won't have access to ground truth information in the test class, and so some of the things like get item will be a little bit different. And then finally, you can add some bells and whistles, like maybe it, just for speed prototyping, limit the number of examples that you load uh, initially just for quicker iteration until you know that your pipeline's working. So with all that in mind, just going to provide you a quick overview, uh, or a quick example, rather, of a basic, very basic data set class. Um, and this would be uh, essentially instantiating using x's and y's. Uh, you can see the length function, just very simple, was stored here. And then finally, um, you can use get item uh, to just return index in to the arrays of your x's and y's. And then finally, uh, a little test data set class that doesn't have access to the y's, which are the ground truths. And then so once you have this definition, you can uh, define an object of your own data set here and then just to show you a few different ways to index into it you can see that uh, our x's and y's are just number x's are 0 to 9 y's are 10 to 19 and so when we index into the first observation you can see that we get 0 and 10 as we'd expect and finally uh, leave it for you to do an exercise to just kind of practice filling out one of these things um, and actually, finally, here is just quickly based on uh, a data set that maybe more uh, resembles what you'd see on a homework. We've provided in the notebook just a quick overview of, uh, for instance, what the directory structure might look like and then how you could create a data set to work with the directory structure rather than, uh, than features and labels directly. So in this case, what we're doing is working with a root directory and then loading files based off of the paths that are provided. And so I uh, can leave it to you to just look through the notebook and um, check that this all makes sense. And again, we, we're doing a directory dataset test as well, because in this case, we will not have access to the labels like we did above. And once you have those defined, you can then go and create your train validation and test datasets.